hello, hello! Oh, hello, welcome one and all! Happy Liberty Day! At least if you live in Portugal, hi! <laughs> I uh, I forgot the red carnations. I should have uh, I, sh I should have brought some <laughs> to decorate the place. <laughs> hello, straight cat. Hello, PPA. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> ah, yeah. Today, today, all you see on TV is uh, programs about uh, about the carnation revolution. <laughs> I, thought, I was thinking I was thinking maybe since since you know it's the, the the actual day maybe I could talk a little bit about it um, mostly because I don't know like I have I have an inkling that most of the people that that watch me um, even if they're a lot not like live I, I've, I've took a little peek at the analytics and most of the people who watch me are not from Portugal so they probably don't even don't even under, don't even know uh, what I'm talking about <laughs> um, but yeah so hi wholesome welcome uh, Zatsudan is a uh, basically a chatting stream. It's a stream where you just uh, talk. I say some drive carnations to send to my Portuguese friends. Oh, dude, that is so sweet. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so maybe I should start maybe I should like start a little at, at the beginning beginning-ish. I mean, if I wanted to start with the actual history of Portugal, I would have to go back uh, to... Oh man, would I would I include Lusitania in it? And like, not just like Lusitania, the, the Roman province, like Lusitania, the territory now thought of as belonging to the Lusitanians, which is not exactly the same territory that was called Lusitania in the Roman Empire. Anyway. <laughs> Hi, Alexa! <laughs> Hi! The starting at the beginning makes sense. Okay. Um, so yeah, without going too far back. <laughs> without going too far back into the past. Okay. So. Um, this is actually an interesting thing because if you think about it, okay, so history, one of the interesting things about history is that everything has its reasoning, like, way back. Like, the seeds of what's happening now have been planted many, many years ago. And uh, if you study a little bit of history, you start seeing that, and uh, Portuguese history, for example, is filled to the brim with cases like that. And uh, this is uh, this is one of them. Okay, so long story short, in the beginning of the 20th century, uh, among other things, the king was killed uh, because of shenanigans that happened during the 19th century. Still, <laughs> one of those rare moments where I where I am here just as you begin. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I appreciate it. I love a good history chat. Let's go. Hey there, new around! <laughs> I was just about to begin telling the story of Liberty Day. Well, going a little bit back, but... Okay, excuse me. F. <laughs> F for the king? Is that F for the king? <laughs> So there's a there's a commemorative plaque dedicated to the to the regicide in uh, in Lisbon. Uh, I've been there. It's neat. It's kind of weird to think. Oh man, this really important. This really important. Uh... <laughs> Thank you, new round. This really important uh, thing. This really important thing that happened. It was like right here, and it's like, whoa, dude. I don't know, I, I just... I absolutely love that kind of feeling. Okay. Oh right, it was not just the king, it was also the, the crown... Uh, the, the crown prince. The one who would be heir, and then... Uh, 
then what happened was that the second son became king and he was not ready for it like at all and uh, he eventually caved to he eventually caved to uh, the Republican effor efforts which of course were also the reason why the king was killed that they were like uh, super super nationalistic they were angry the, the uh, moving on. <laughs> Happy we made our flag ugly day. <laughs> I mean, they did. <laughs> they kind of did. I, I would, I would rather. I mean, um, I mean, looks itself. I might be a bit biased, but uh, I would, I would kind of like it if our flag was still blue and white. <laughs> okay, so basically. Okay, so basically, uh, those guys, those guys, uh, they killed the king, and later, later the Republicans went, uh, made a revolution, they came into power. But here's the thing, I don't find it ugly. No, it, you know, it's subjective, you know? <laughs> it's, it's subject, it's subjective. I need context, is this revolution related to Salazar? Yes, yes, we're getting there, okay. So. I'm gonna try to make it a little bit short. Impossible, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> okay, so that first republic did not go well. Especially because World War I happened, uh, like, I don't, four years after it was, it was installed? Yeah. Yeah, so your operating system has to uh, deal with the... Uh, with not only not only the the actual world war but the fallout from it as well so yeah and uh, some of the fallout from the from the first world war was of course you know the whole colonies thing no this one is before salazar oh he um i think that new around meant uh the actual like liberty day alexa <laughs> they never do yeah uh, so, so yeah, and this, this regime, this first republic that they usually, they called it, uh, they, it was a mess, like, other than dealing with all of this, because, like, they thought that if they killed the king, if they, and if they came into power, that all the, pro all the country's problems were going to be solved. Wrong! It never works like that. I don't know why anyone would think like that. But then again, those guys didn't study history like we like we do nowadays. Well, some of us anyway. Um, so yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Imagine their surprise when they inherited a country full of problems that they were not equipped to to handle. Uh, yeah. So such was this mess that around 16 years later. 15, 15 years later, uh, there was a military coup and a dictatorship was installed. And part of that, and uh, part of that uh, dictatorship uh, was uh, centered around, well, authoritarianism was on the rise throughout, throughout Europe already. Um, I don't know, I'm not sure if you can call it like fascist all, already, you know? I hope that I hope that YouTube doesn't flag me for saying these words, but like it's history. <laughs> All right, I thought that they were talking about the revolution you were talking about now. Ye yeah, a power vacuum isn't a convenient cleaning device. Yeah, who'd have thunk? <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so, so the so the military dictatorship was installed, and my memory—well, not memory. Yeah, memory uh, on the events about that about that period in history are a little bit fuzzy. I do know that, unfortunately, it also killed a lot of uh, a lot of artistic endeavors in Portugal. Like, for example, I know that they were making silent films in the 1920s. And uh, I think that a lot of it went out the window once the dictatorship was installed. It probably will. I rec I wreck using far right. Oh, okay, okay. I'll okay. I'll try. I'll try. I'll try to keep that in mind. Okay. 
Um, so, so yeah, uh, among the people uh, instated during that military dictatorship was this fellow named Antonio de Oliveira Salazar. And this guy, he was not... He was not like a big player, okay? He was just he was just there like as a finance minister, if I if I recall correctly. He only came in he only came into power later. But during the the, the dictatorship, and as any good far right dictatorship does, there's uh, <laughs> there's uh, rules that you have to follow. Otherwise, other otherwise you uh, uh, you go to jail. And they do things to you, bad things, and uh, y yeah. So, um, it was it, it was bad. It was bad times. Like Portugal was kind of like in its own bubble for a while. It, it was also one of the only. It was also one of the only. Uh, one of the only European countries that still had overseas territories. All I know about Salazar's uh, government is that it was pretty rural and conservative. Fascist m governments were modernist and revolutionary, so it wouldn't be that. Yeah, no, an interesting thing about Salazar, he did not like Hitler. He did not like Hitler, like, at all. Uh, he, th he, saw, he saw Hitler as a convenient buffer against, against uh, communism, against Russian communism, but that was about it. He did not like the attitude of the guy. Uh, so yeah, the, so yeah, the dictatorship that we had in Portugal was a little bit different because it was not forward thinking; it was inward. It, it was it, it was kind of like it, it was uh, <laughs> it was backwards thinking. <laughs> Let's put it like that. Yeah, no, like you know the the good old fashioned values on which we used to rely. That was uh, that was uh, that was Salazar's that was Salazar's uh, Portugal, basically. An interesting thing that I also think about around, like, this time is that, uh, I'm sorry if I sound a little bit rambly, but, uh, you know, thoughts are coming as they, as they show up. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically what Salazar did to the country, like, okay, so, yeah, there, there were good things, like, there was money, like, there was money, the, financially the country was doing okay, but civil liberties were stomped down. Uh, like freedom of religion was not a thing. Freedom of anything was not a thing. Like you couldn't even reconvene, like you know, with a bunch of friends without uh, being afraid that some agent from the from the special police would uh, would be around uh, to you know to snoop on your conversations and uh, make sure that you were not that you did not have like any communistic allegiances hungary had a form of fat <laughs> okay fat it <laughs> there was agrarian agra agrarianist luckily we never got a, a great pole pot yeah Portuguese Sakoku. Yeah, it was it was kind of like that. It was kind of like that, especially during especially during World War II, where because because Salazar did not like Hitler, uh, he chose to. Well, it, it was that and a couple of and a bunch of other reasons. I'm not recalling like exactly which ones right now, but I know that that was definitely one of the reasons that Portugal remained neutral in uh, in World War II, because like, oh wait, 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 yeah, no, one of the big reasons, one of the big reasons was, okay, so if Portugal is a far-right country, uh, then supposedly if they join the war effort, they're going on the side of Germany. There's two problems with that. One, again, Salazar was not a fan of Hitler. In fact, he really did not like the guy. Plus, there was still the friendship treaty between Portugal and between uh, Portugal and uh, and the UK that had been in Vig that had been a thing since 13 1343, I think. I think it's 1343. I could be wrong, but I do, but I know that it's like it's one of the oldest it's one of the oldest friendship, 
quote unquote treaties between two countries uh in that's still in that's still in uh that's still in in vogue that's not the word that's not the word that is still valid like <laughs> has remained valid uh in in the world you know <laughs> yes yeah, are called nest nest uh, not so pagans Caesarism. Oh, whoa. <laughs> In effect, yes. Thank you, Stray Cat. The ancient alliance with, with England. Exactly. So, like, yeah, Portugal was kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. You know, with this whole thing. Because, like, yeah, if it was a democratic country, probably it would have been in the, on the side of the allies, but it wasn't. So, mm, that's still Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I, I'm sure that's I'm sure that's a reference that I'm not that I'm not getting, but it's it's funny regardless. <laughs> okay, so yeah, there. So yeah, that was. Oh yeah. Uh, two two major things that I want to mention about what Portugal was like during those times. Okay, and th this is gonna become a little bit of a tangent, but it's all gonna come. But it's all gonna come back. You'll see. Okay, so, like, in the 60s, I don't know how familiar you are with, like, uh, Walt Disney history, but I'm sure that you're familiar with Walt Disney World. It's young people for good. <laughs> okay. Okay, so... Disney had his Florida project, what later became Walt Disney World. But at the but in its first drafts, it was actually something called Epcot. Which was, let me see if I recall the acronym correctly. Uh experimental prototype community of tomorrow. Exactly. Experimental prototype community of tomorrow. Epcot. There you go. Um, now, you might be wondering, why the heck am I bringing up Epcot, of all things? <laughs> oh no, how does Disney fit into this? Uh, it's a little bit of a comparison, you'll see what I mean. Okay, so, uh, what Disney kind of wanted to do, like, again, I'm a little bit fuzzy on the specifics, I need to reread about that. Uh... This, th that sounds super villain tire sinister. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it kind of was. It's kind of was. And you know, if I may just open a little parenthesis here, that's one of the reasons why I think Walt Disney is kind of fascinating because he was so innocent. He was, he was so naive. He was so naive in some of the things that he, that he thought. He's like, oh yeah, this there's this thing and it's really good and stuff, but he kind of failed to understand how things would actually work in practice. Um, and it's like you can understand with a with a background like his where he came from when he was, you know, making those assessments and thinking about those things. In the case of but but you know, but they're not but they're not actually, you know, again, good to put in practice. Um but uh, but yeah, with Epcot specifically. So what he thought was uh, that he was going to build a city of the future. Uh, they did. They did end up making uh, making a city uh, in in Florida that was you know backed by the Disney company later on. But it was nothing like it was nothing like Epcot. Uh, and uh, okay, so what he wanted was basically uh okay imagine imagine like a whole city like on conveyor belts and everything that you do is uh kind of timed and uh, everything around you is super futuristic but you're not really allowed to stay outside of your lane kind of like um think 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 kind of like think kind of like the jetsons <laughs> Uh, and I would not say like 1984, but uh, going a little bit, basically, basically he thought of as a city as a tourist attraction, kinda. 
Because, like, the people who lived there could serve as examples to people who came visit to gain inspiration to to then go back and want to bring the same lifestyle. I love that mini game in Pokemon Stadium. Uh, w which one? W which one? I I'm pretty sure. Okay, let let me let me think let me think about it. Uh, there's uh, there's Harden. There's a. Uh, there's the Clefairy says. There's a <laughs> There's the sushi go around. Yeah, like uh the Oh wait, the sushi go around conveyor belt. Okay. I I think I get it. I think I get it. <laughs> okay. And uh again, you might be wondering why do I bring up Disney and Epcot in a conversation about uh where everything is on conveyor belts, you can't go very far. It, yes, yes, okay, I, I get it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, but yeah, uh, where was I? All right. Um, but basically, this whole thing of uh, you know a city, a place where people actually live, but it's also kind of like a living, breathing tourist attraction is an idea that has already seen practice in Portugal under Salazar's regime because they because that's basically what they turned Portugal into they turned Portugal into this massive tourist attraction so that people could come in and and look and gawk at the local yokels and uh, just uh, and just see how they live see how they see how they remain in their old ways never wishing for anything more <laughs> um and this is interesting because uh, there is actual video footage and this is why I make the connection between the two. There's actual video footage of Walt Disney visiting Portugal during the 1960s. While he was working on the Florida project. And I am pretty sure, like, this is a little bit tinfoil hat i I'll admit. But I am pretty sure that one of the reasons that he might have come here could have been getting inspiration for the Florida project. <laughs> or at least to try and figure out how it would work. Yeah, that's... <laughs> oh god. Yeah, that's that's why I that's why I kind of that's why I kind of mix the two a little bit. Yeah, especially since especially since there is a lot of uh, what is Atlantis is Portugal, Disneyland is Portugal, everything is Portugal. <laughs> no, not Disneyland, Walt Disney World. Walt Disney World is. Well, then again, he died before he could put his Florida project in motion. Like, uh, when did Walt Disney World open? It was already after he died. Like, they were working on it, but like, when he died, when he died, they, they shifted gears. They just made, oh, okay, let's, let's just make Disneyland again. So they made, so they made the Magic Kingdom. And then later they brought back the name Epcot. Uh, which I still, I still want to go to Epcot one day because it's kind of like, it's kind of like a big World's Fair. Like a permanent World's Fair, and I love that sort of feeling, and I miss the World's Fair so much. It was here, it was here in 1998, and I was too, and I was too, well, young, I would say. Like I've said, I've started visiting, I started visiting, uh, I've started visiting the future since like the 90s. I don't have any rec I don't have any recollection before, before the 90s. But yeah, the first time that uh, but yeah, the first time that I was here like with with the World's Fair, 
like, I did not take advantage of it, like, at all. <laughs> and I feel so bad about it. It doesn't, doesn't help that I, at the time I also had kind of, like, claustrophobia. And the UK pavilion was really, really, really closed in. So I, so I kind of felt funny the the whole rest of the day and then there were there were things that happened like one of my friends got uh, got amnesia like legit amnesia like he he fell he fell hit his head and uh didn't remember how he got there like <laughs> oh man uh world fair 98 y'all Go, go look at some videos of it if you can, like, it was, it, it, it was fun. I feel so bad. I feel so bad that, that, that I wasn't able to, to enjoy it when, when it happened. Yeah, no, he is. He is. Like, oh, dude, that friend of mine, that friend of mine, let me tell you, he is, he is an ace. Like... I've never seen anyone who's, who was so consistently good at everything. And that's before he hit his head, by the way. <laughs> uh, he, also, he also always found a way to have a different part of the body in a cast uh, every single year. Because again, he was not just an ace at, you know, stuff that involved thinking. He was also an ace at, at physical stuff. And he tended to push himself a little too hard, like, I don't know, uh, stepping on nails, breaking a leg, breaking an arm, breaking a wrist, breaking, uh, get, getting, getting stitches on the head. Uh, like, I've never seen anyone like, <laughs> I've never seen anyone like him. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, no, it, and he's, and, <laughs> and he's, and, and he's a, and he's a super nice chap as well. He already has he already has kids. That is so weird. <laughs> Day, I wish he is okay. Yeah, he is. He is. Don't don't worry about him. He's as far as I know, as far as I know, I was the last time that I was with him, it was uh, when was it? It was a couple of months ago. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, I was with him. I was with him a couple of months ago. Um because he decided to bring like our like our second family all together at least at least the the younger generation <laughs> that moment when you go oh my god that dude's a dad yeah i'll be i'll be honest i'll i'll be com i'll be complete i'll be completely honest it bothers me well, bother is a bit of a strong word, but but uh, but uh, but you understand what I mean. It bothers me more to see his parents as grandparents than to see him as a parent. It it's it's such a strange it's such a strange feeling. <laughs> I don't know. I guess because I guess because I'm still stuck in like the old world mentality of uh, you know oh grandparents they're like oh. Come here, youngins, let me tell you a story. I am your grandmother, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, that, that sort of that sort of grandparent. I'm not, I'm still not used to the idea of grandparents being just your parents' parents, you know? I think that things, I think that ch things have changed a lot in, uh, in these last, in these last decades. And I do think that it's for the best because honestly, I don't like thinking that a person's useful time ends uh, like by the time that they're like 50, which is which is what the general feeling used to be, I guess. At least from at least from what I remember seeing when uh, when I when I was really when I was really small. Um. But yeah, uh, all of this to say, right, going back to, <laughs> oh man, we've, we've gotten, we've gotten here because of, because of Epcot. <laughs> Every adult was a child once moment. Yeah. 
Meanwhile, New Around is taking a deep dive into Portuguese politics. <laughs> oh, it's... Portuguese politics are interesting, I think. I mean, there's other, there's other countries that are, you know, a little bit more vibrant, but, uh, but Portugal, Portugal is a little bit weird. Portugal is a little bit weird, not because, not because our politicians are weird, even though there's, there, there, there's definitely some weirdos in the assembly nowadays, but I won't name names. <laughs> I like my friend's mentality and age. Everyone under 80 is a kid. It's a very generous way to see the world. Yes, yes, that's how, that's how I see it. That's how I see it nowadays. That's how I see it nowadays as well. Like... Uh, for example, my my grandma, well, unfortunately, right now she's not doing so well. She had, I think that I mentioned it before, she had a stroke last summer, and uh, she's never she's never been the same again. Like she used to be entirely self sufficient, even at the age of like eighty something. She was above eighty. She was born in the, in the thirties. That's that's all that I'm gonna say. Uh, so yeah, she. By the way, she lived through she lived through Salazar's regime <laughs> throughout not most of her life, but th but throughout her formative years and a sizable chunk of what can be considered her active life. Um. So. Uh, so. So yeah, it, it kind of it's kind of weird. I tend to I tend to look at these things in a very sort of natural way, but it's a little bit. But I would remiss. I wouldn't. I would be honest with myself if I, if I didn't say that it's a little bit weird to know that like a person's life can just change like from one moment to the next. Like right now, she's at an old folks' home. Uh, she's doing well. She's doing well. She speaks a lot, but you know. But she's not as... If she's as cognizant as, as she as she was before, we can't really tell. But, uh, you know, it's... Uh, yeah. My 80-plus 80, my 80 grandparents keep referring to 60-year-old people they meet as young men and women. Yeah! That's, that's the spirit! <laughs> or 50-year-olds. Yes! Yes, definitely. Especially, especially when you, especially when you start being, you know, more adult-ish, uh, or start having the mentality of an adult, which I have, even though, you know, because of time travel shenanigans, um, you start really seeing that nobody ever really grows up. <laughs> you grow up in some things. You grow up in some things, but others are like they're a choice. I mean, when I first found that out, I almost, I legit had an, ex I, I had an existential crisis. Because <laughs> I'm like, dude, you mean people can choose not to be good people? Oh, dude, God. <laughs> yeah, I noticed everyone's young at heart, yeah. Yeah, I noticed those guys. You know what I, who you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Best wishes to her. Sending love to your to your grandma. I often care for the elderly no, nursing, so I love my oldies. Yeah. Yeah, no. She <laughs> a funny thing is that she was never she was never like the kindly grandma that you usually see. You know, that was her mom. Her mom was like that. My great grandmother was, you know, the granny classic, the the the, gra the granny classic. You know, really kind, really soft spoken, really patient. My grandma is, well, she was not like that, like at all. She was like, "What are you doing? What are you doing? Don't don't, don't you think? Don't you think you should help? Don't you think you should help?" I'm, I'm here, I'm here working my bone off. Now I don't even get a thanks. <laughs> oh man, but she, she had to toughen up. She had to toughen up. <laughs> Zen, hello. 
I'm talking about the Carnation Revolution and grandmas. <laughs> <laughs> they have the best stories. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can I can tell I can tell one. I can tell one. Well, it's not a story that my grandma told me. It's a it's a story about my grandma. Uh yeah, just, just gonna read channel it. That's when you know you're an adult seeing that an that adult is not a real thing. Yes. <laughs> yes, totally. <laughs> Something, some things, some things you you do grow and some and others don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's definitely that's definitely how 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 it goes. Oh, most of the oldies have snark that I can really appreciate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, Granny, Granny Classic, Granny Light, <laughs> the Mao. <laughs> Some parts in you don't grow, it doesn't grow up. Yeah, yeah. Usually, like, you have you have to keep you have to keep a good balance. You have to keep a good balance between being a responsible adult and uh, being a child at heart. You know, like I really do. I really do think that that's the best way to to approach to approach life. Um. But yeah, okay, so uh, the story about my grandma, and then I'll go back to the real-life Epcot that was Portugal. <laughs> um, because it also, because and I can use that as like a jumping-off point, because uh, yeah, since my grandma actually lived during those times, okay. So, picture this, it's the 40s, and my grandma is like... Mm, Eight to nine years old, around that. Um, one thing that you should know about my grandma is that she hates snakes. She absolutely despises snakes. Like, even just the mention of a snake would make her go, Ugh! Ugh! No, don't, don't talk about that. <laughs> um... So, one day, my grandma was uh, walking to school, and what does she what does she see besides like a tree? Uh, this was like, uh, by the way, uh, she took I don't know exactly how long she took to get to school, but she didn't live in the actual like village, so she, it it was it was quite a it was quite a trek to to get there. Uh, so what does she see? Besides a tree, a dead snake. And she's like, I, I, I've seen, like, because I have seen the snake, now my whole self is contaminated, uh, including my lunch. So, <laughs> so, uh, so what this so what does she do? She leaves the lunch next to the snake. Like she can't eat it anymore. It's been in contact with the snake. It's not actually been in contact with the snake, but she feels like it like it has, so now she's too grossed out by it. So she just leaves the, the lunch next to the next to the snake and uh, goes to school without lunch. And she does this for a couple of weeks at least. <laughs> <laughs> oh man I don't remember if she was found out I don't remember if she was found out like if her mom or her dad said something I know that her I know that her brother so my great uncle uh <laughs> he used to tease her he used to tease her a lot <laughs> a snake Went to, went up to went to school hill went up went to school uphill both ways <laughs> yeah snake is like a fateful offering <laughs> yeah yeah like before my mom confirmed it to me because I I knew because I remembered the whole leaving leaving the lunch uh, next to the snake part I didn't remember exactly the why I didn't remember if it was like 
because she was grossed out by her lunch now or because it was you know some kind of offering so that the snake wouldn't somehow come to life and attack her <laughs> That's a weird type of superstition. Oh, my grandma had a, had a lot of weird superstitions. Like she had this thing. She she had this she had this thing where she where she took the she removed people's uh, cubrento. I don't know how that's called in English. It, it's kind of like an evil eye thing. So she did something with in the sink with uh, olive oil and salt and said like uh, some incantations or prayers or or something uh s s to remove the evil eye from people like uh she only she, she usually only did that for like she only did that for family members but uh, like when i first saw her like doing that i was like well, grandma what the f what the frick are you doing <laughs> Couldn't she have just have taken a detour? The first time I can understand, but for weeks, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm familiar with. I'm familiar with the area. I'm familiar with the area that she was in. And right now, like nowadays, there's a lot of like winding roads. I don't know if that was the case back then. Like, re remind reminder that we're talking about the 40s. <laughs> she was so stubborn to go that way. <laughs> yeah. That's where Grandma Stubbornness was born. Lol started at eight or, eight or nine year old. Evil Eye. Yeah, mom, this mom did this to me too. Yeah, like it's it's one of those it's one of those weird things. Like on one hand, on one hand, it's on one hand, it's super interesting. But on the other, you're like, but Grandma, it doesn't like it doesn't work like that. You're you're just you're just wasting olive oil. <laughs> But you know, it's those it's those traditional it's those traditional things that I like because I like of I like because of the symbolism inherent in them. Not so much because I think they're true. <laughs> that's a lot that's how I feel about that's how I feel about esotericism in the real world. Uh in general. Uh really. I mean, like, in, like in Atlantis, like I mentioned, you know, that stuff, that stuff is real in it, in Atlantis, and you know, in in fiction land, in uh, real life land, not so much. <laughs> but yeah, um, oh right, and <laughs> oh right, uh, going okay, going back. Reminder that this was still during, this was still during the the dictatorship. <laughs> So, so yeah. Uh, going back, going back, going back. Re rewinding, rewinding my brain. Re the intention matters more than the action. Yeah, it's the rituals. The rituals are important to people. In a way, it's kind of like a placebo, but it's like it's a placebo that feels good, you know? Like if if it if it makes if it makes you feel. If it makes you feel good and there's no harm in it, I guess that's okay. <laughs> uh, hello, Jaylonia. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. We're talking about grandmas. <laughs> My grand... My grandmother's superstitions are very stupid, but they made for a, they make for a fascinating fantasy setting. Yeah. Yeah, like... Ah, uh, dude, I love it. I love it when like, I love it when um, when fiction when fiction takes those things into account. Like, especially when especially when you can uh, you know go pick up uh, superstitions and uh, folklore and stuff like that from countries that you don't usually see it from because you know because we all know like about anime and uh, they use a lot of their folklore and superstition for you know as as a source for ideas and i wish more countries did that like there's so much richness that that's why that's why that's that's why that's why i love uh anthropology and history <laughs> it's old school mental health yeah i'll burn seven matches and dump them into a cup of water make five crosses on your body with it then make you take seven sips of the charcoal water <laughs> 
Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely sounds. Definitely sounds like a thing. That did. <laughs> also, doesn't feel like it. Doesn't feel like it tastes very good. Hello, Penny. Welcome. <laughs> it's going well. Thank you. It's a national holiday. Yay! Uh, speaking. Uh, speaking of which, okay. So uh, I was talking about the uh, Disney and Epcot and. Uh, Portugal being basically a real-life whole country of Epcot. <laughs> um, yeah, one of the things that I was going to say is that a lot of what is considered, like, tradition, like, uh, in Portugal nowadays, was actually made up by Salazar's regime. Like, they had a whole, they had a whole department dedicated to the creation of... Of, uh, of a Portuguese narrative that would be easily accessible, easily accessible, easily understandable, and most of all, uh, uh, what, what's the word? What's the word? Uh, nation friendly. Basically, you know, stuff to boost, stuff to boost the nation's identity, basically. Grandma's got some pretty scary superstitions, yeah. It tastes smoky, smoky water. <laughs> oh man, but like, not smoky like barbecue, it's just like water. <laughs> yeah, okay, I get it. It's like Henry VIII and reinventing Christianity to his liking. Yeah, and uh, nowadays you still have people like... Yeah, no, Anglicanism, that's the that's the one true religion. Oh, you mean the one that Henry VIII made up? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, like um and Salazar like yeah, with 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 religion Salazar was really I already mentioned like the freedom of religion thing or the lack thereof. Uh but yeah, and that's something that you still see in a lot of the country like uh, Catholicism still has a huge hold on uh, on the country and on uh, how on how it operates, um, and that's and that's because that's because of Salazar's regime. In fact, that's one of the reasons why the First Republic didn't take off like they originally wanted because the First Republic was inherently atheistic. Now, imagine that you go to a rural village and uh, tell them, Oh, you know religion? You know, you know religion? It's not important anymore. Get over it. C can you imagine how, that, how well that would go in the 1910s in rural Portugal? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the <laughs> that's not going to work, buddy. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Um. So yeah, and th and this part, this part of like of a lot of stuff being made up by the regime, like uh, that that's stuff that a lot of people don't know. Like for example, uh, music. Uh, mu what do you think of as Portuguese music nowadays is completely different from what it used to be, like before the regime. Most most of it was made up or like maybe it existed in some places and then it got readapted to the entire country like that you know the whole thing of you know lots of uh lots of like guitars and uh and accordions and stuff yeah that's not what traditional portuguese music was like traditional portuguese music was a lot more like uh arabic folk music i would say like, you know, a lot of chanting and a lot of drums. Of course, you know, the rhythms were different, but, uh, you know, Portugal also had a very strong Arabic presence, like, in the early... in the early first millennium? Yeah, the early first millennium. Well, not, not, not the early... not the early first millennium. Uh, the late... the late first millennium. Late first millennium, and uh, then it stayed like that uh, for a couple hundred years, I guess. Most republics were. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Humans go wild and do wild stuff in the name of religion. E yes, yes, they do. French, Spanish, etc. There were the Cristero Wars in Mexico. 
Did the Fatima did the Fatima miracle happen before the regime? Fatima was before World War World War Two, or even before World War One. I, I forgot. It's interesting. It's interesting that you bring that. I will uh, that you bring that up. I I I was debating with myself whether I should bring it up uh, as well or not. Basically, the whole Fatima thing. The whole Fatima thing, uh, yes, it was it was during World War One. It was in 1916 or se or 17. I always get I always get the the date the date slightly confused. Uh, I think it's because I think it's because I had uh, a tape. I had a tape that was like an animated version of the Miracle of Fatima uh, that that said it was 19 it was 1916 but i'm pretty sure it was 1917. yeah there you go there, there there you go um so yeah no the thing is fatima there is there is uh okay i'm just gonna put it like this the likelihood that fatima was just an elaborate setup by the church to re to uh, to save uh, to save religion from the clutches of the new republic is almost 100%. It is very, 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 very likely that that whole thing happened. Because, because the church was not happy with what the New Republic was doing. Also, also, I mentioned before the whole thing of the New Republic, you know, wanted strict separation of church and state. But one thing that one thing that uh, that also uh, one thing that also happened again, World War One, uh, and unlike World War Two, Portugal actually fought in World War One. Unlike the Spanish, the Spanish managed to sit out both both world wars. I don't know how they managed it. I am not very versed in Spanish history. <laughs> I know that I know that the second time around it was because of Franco. I think it was, I think it was I think it was because uh, uh, well not Franco Franco let's uh, let's call him Fran Franco Franco el el general Franco. <laughs> The New Republic. What is this Star Wars? It kind of was. It kind of was. They they killed they killed off they killed off the regent and um, and came into power. <laughs> Three kids had a vision, and seven days later, the sun turned blue and went nuts in the sky. <laughs> It was not. It, it was not as simple as that. It was not as simple. It was not as simple as that. It, it was actually like during uh, during uh, during a couple of months. Like the date where the sun supposedly went crazy in the sky was actually in October. They were supposed to. They were supposed to visit the same shrub uh, every month from May to from May to October. <laughs> Also, I do have an animated short film of the Fatima Miracle. Want me to send it and send it to you? I think it's probably the same one that I have. Unless there were like two. I know of one. The, was the cover was the cover like uh, was the cover like uh, silver-ish? Advanced siesta taking just sleep through the the world wars. Yes. <laughs> oh right, right, right. Okay, right. I remembered. One of the reasons, it was probably not the only one, but one of the reasons why Franco didn't take part in the Second World War was because Salazar convinced him not to. Other than all the problems that Spain was facing at that time, you know, I think that we're all familiar with Picasso's painting Guernica that, about the Spanish Civil War. Um, but yeah, other than those problems... Other than other than those problems, I think there was Salazar that actually like reconvened with Franco and said, "Look, we don't want, <laughs> we don't we don't want to go to no war." <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, I think I think that's what happened because Franco, I think he was kind of ambivalent about it, but Salazar was firmly in the no. 
beats me. I, I was sent a short. Yeah, okay, yes, it is. I have I have the V I have the VHS tape of it. <laughs> I have the VHS tape. Uh great great dub. Great dub. Still weird hearing Miguel Guillermo voicing a little kid, but you know. <laughs> what you gonna do? Um but yeah, uh, where, where was I? Where was I going with this? Uh, Fatima, Fatima, World War One, right, right, right. Because uh, yeah, the church kind of took advantage of the fact that World War One was uh, was going on because you know people's morale was super low. Like, um, World War One was very bad for everyone involved, but like, I think that. The general consensus in Portugal, again, take that with a, with a grain of salt because inherent bias. Uh, the general consensus in Portugal is that the Portuguese were treated as the most expendable of the bunch. Like, they were not even afforded, you know, basic dignity and death. And I know that that, I, and I know that dignity and death in uh, World War One, was a bit of a luxury, but like, in most cases, in most cases, there were no bodies to send back home. Basically, in fact, I have no idea why did they think that? Why did they think after World War One that it was a good idea? That, that it was a good idea to keep the colonies because look I, I think that we've I think that we've established by now that it's not worth it <laughs> but it was just so intrinsically linked to the Portuguese way of thinking it was like oh you know we're Portugal but our thing our thing is the the discovery age like and we still have all those colonies to show for it like it's it's what makes us us you know like, I know that that's, I know that that's a very, a very hard, a very hard mindset to crack. But, I don't know, like, so many countries in World War I realized, look, this is not worth it. Why didn't we follow suit? I don't get it. <laughs> hey, neighbor, how about we don't ruin our nations in apocalyptic total war? You can do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's basic. That's basically what it was. <laughs> the Germans were more pagan. Spain was Catholic. Pretty obvious. Was, was why Salazar was friendly. Y yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that that's also important. That tracks. It was worth it for Il Xavier. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> I know! They knew that one day, from one of the colonies, a star would be born. A black panther, if you will. Before Wakanda. <laughs> oh god, Salazar are trying to whitewash the game. <laughs> yeah! That, that guy, I mean, to be frank, uh, uh, Vash the Gamma has been whitewashed for many, many a moon, many a year. Like, even only like, uh, uh, how long, like, uh, around one, uh, 100 years after, after his uh, exploits, people were already sugarcoating all the stuff he did. So, so yeah, Salazar doing that like a uh, hundred, some hundred years, some uh, five hundred years later is just par for the course at this point. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I grew up playing Anno 1602, so I can relate to the good feel of having little overseas territories across the map. Yeah, no, like <laughs> in a in a way, in a way, it must have been kind of like a drug, like. Can you imagine, like, okay, so, one of Portugal's claims to fame, one of Portugal's claims to fame is actually the fact that our continental territory has been pretty much unchanged for hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of years. Like, 
you have the entire map of Europe. Like, everything from Spain to, well, I don't know, Latvia or something. Like, and it's always changing, always shifting around for, for hundreds upon hundreds of years. And Portugal just stays there. Just a little rectangle, just always the same. Wait, Vash the Gamma wasn't white. Uh, he means whitewashing as in m making light of the things that he did. <laughs> yes, Va Vashk's adventures are nightmare fuel. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, Salazar tried whitewashing his messed up crimes. Yes, that's, uh, yeah. By the way, I was referencing uh, Luis de Camões and the, the Lusíadas, which is required reading for every child going through the school system. <laughs> Not uh, most people don't. Most people who who learn who learn about it in school don't don't get it. But it's like, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and uh, all of this to say, and speaking of the colonies, then we come to another thing that uh, Salazar did that was super nice, you all. Okay, so in, 90, in 1961, uh, something happened in Goa. Goa, at the time, was a Portuguese, uh, was a Portuguese-owned uh, city, city-state. It was kind of like Macau, at least like Macau was until 1999. <laughs> Goodness, I am so distracted with learning how to code that I'm barely paying attention. That's that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, in the grand old year of 1961, uh, Indian nationalists decided to take Goa uh, away from Portugal. Uh, and... I am not, there is a book, there is a book entirely about that subject that I still want to read. It's been on my wish list for like five years now. Uh, that explains what happened, that explains what happened there in, in detail. Goa, the Portuguese Macau of India. <laughs> you know something that is, you know something that is interesting? There is still, you know, despite all the, all the, all, all the scuffles and stuff, Goa still has, nowadays, still has a lot of Portuguese influences. Like, even in the music, like, they use accordions. <laughs> what book is it? Uh... Hold on, let me, hold on, let me, let me check. Uh... Just really quick. Mm. Oh, there's uh, there, there's a there's one here that is also that is also pretty interesting. Uh, check checkmate to Goa. Yeah, but that that's not that's not the one that's not the one that I wanted. Mm. No. Oh man, like I remember that it was uh, that it, that it was a. Uh, It was, it was more of like a study book. Goa, India, and Portugal. No. Mm. Uh, let let me actually check uh, uh, one of these uh, big old online uh, bookstores. Show me everything that you have with Goa. I am pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that the that the book had Goa in the title. Mm. Oh, there you go. There you go. Uh, the book is named a Libert uh, Libertação de Goa, or the the the. How, how do you how do you put how do you put that in in English? Uh, the freeing. The, the freeing of Goa. <laughs> Basically. 
It's uh, 222, no, 224 pages long. I saw this. I saw this once when I was when I was working at a bookstore, and uh, I was uh, absolutely fascinated. <laughs> uh, I'll um. I'll send you I'll send you later like the the link of the book in DMs maybe because the author is not Portuguese even so it's probably a translated version the one that uh, the the one that uh, the one that I have on my on my wish list. Uh, didn't mean to st totally stump you. That's okay. I I like to I like doing this research. <laughs> and you to sell us art. Cry about it. <laughs> yeah. No, they, they, they really did that. <laughs> uh, India was pretty aggressive in that period. Aside from Go, it also conquered Sikkim. Yes. Yes, no. And it was... And, like, I am pretty sure that it was already in the works. But when... But when Salazar lost Goa, he pretty much went into overdrive with the whole no the colonies are still portugal portugal is still the colonies they're all one and the same the only thing that changes is that they're in different continents but everyone is the same <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll send you i'll send you the link stray cat um the book title in English is The Libertation of Goa, A Participant's, uh, participant's View of History. Th there you go! There you go! <laughs> Thank you, Alexa! Thank you so much! <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah. And, uh... I don't... I don't... I don't know exactly what started it. What, what started the whole, like... The next chapter in Portuguese history, which was, and of course, the colonial war. Uh, I think that I think that it was like okay, it, it was a mix of this, what happened with Goa, and uh, like the freedom freedom fighter groups uh, emerging uh, in the other colonies, mainly like Angola and Mozambique. Is that how you pronounce it in English, Mozambique? Cause like I in uh, in Portuguese is it's uh, Mozambique, but I think that in English it's Mozambique. Awesome sauce. <laughs> Saved, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think that it, I think there was like a things things just happened together, kind of like. At the at the same time, um, but yeah, when that started happening, uh, well, Salazar pretty much panicked. He didn't want to lose any other territories like he did India. So, what did he do? Send people to fight the freedom fighters in all the colonies. And what people did they send? Well, the usual uh, people who did not want to go to war, but had to because they were of age, and uh, yeah. Angola had the MPLA. Yes. Yes, it did. Wingardium Angola. <laughs> Wingardium Angola <laughs> Am I gonna get in trouble <laughs> to say that? <laughs> Frank to sell us. Hey neighbor, I'm worried about you. Remember that thing you said about not ruining your nation with total war? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. I mean, I don't know when Franco died. Wait, no, Franco died in 1975. Franco died in 1975. He was still alive during this whole during this whole time. Yeah. Not now. I'm con I'm busy conscripting everyone to go fight in the jungle. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. No. It, it was it was tough. If you hear. If you hear this, if you hear the stories of like survivors of the war, 
like, okay, uh, cafe buff a little bit. My grandpa fought in the fought in the colonial war, as did many many others. Um, my grandpa, aka uh, the husband of the grandma that I mentioned to you, the one with the one with the snake. <laughs> um. So, so yeah, we have like a couple, we have a bunch of pictures. There's a lot of like Portuguese people also that uh, were born in uh, in the colonies during during this time. Um. Portugal, grande la vila morena. Side eye. How is that space program coming along? It's explosive. <laughs> oh man. I actually don't know a lot about European space programs. All I know. Uh, I'll, uh, the one that I know is uh, is one that was French, I think. And the only reason why I know of it is because at one point they wanted to use Asterix as like a spokes spokes mascot. Let's put it like that for the space pro. <laughs> no, seriously, Google for Spanish astronaut. Okay, I'll, I will I will do that. I will do that. Uh, okay, let me let me just uh, real real really quick because I am genuinely curious. Okay, let's see. First, Spanish astronaut. Chang Diaz. Oh wait, no. <laughs> that's that's the first Hispanic astronaut from NASA. No. No, Lui no. Luis Carrero Luis Carrero Blanco. There you go. Um, bu -bu 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 Wait, taking office? Wait, what? What? Where is uh? Where is the? Oh, he was assassinated. This guy was assassinated. Hey. <laughs> there's nothing any. There's nothing in here about a space program. Let me. Maybe I'm just missing it. Okay. I don't know, guys. Like, it seems like being the first Spanish astronaut would be important enough to have in the very first in the very first uh, Wikipedia paragraph. Like, Spanish Navy officer and politician, a longtime confidant and right-hand man of dictator Francisco Franco. Francisco Franco. Carrero serves as uh, Spain's premier and in various other high-ranking offices, uh, offices of the Francoist dictatorship until his assassination in a car bombing. <laughs> that hence the explosive part. Okay, he particip participated in the Rift War, supported the rebel faction, prominent fi figures in Francoist dictatorship, uh, under Secretary of Presidency, Law of Succession, Handpicked him as his successor. Uh, he became prime minister and then exploded. Ah. Why is that? What? Oh wait, is it a joke that I'm not getting? Because he because he was he was launched into the air because he was blown up. Okay, look at the pics. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had the I had the window I had the window window taken and taken all the screen. Okay. Salazar in 19... <laughs> Look at the pics, it's worth it. Okay, 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 I will, I will, I will. Images. Okay. 
I did. Chang Diaz has nothing on this guy. <laughs> oh man, this one, this one of like the car above the Earth's atmosphere. <laughs> Oh man, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta show, I gotta show this to my mom. I gotta show this to my mom, she's gonna love it. <laughs> oh man, oh, dude. <laughs> you just, you just made my day. <laughs> I mean, it was not going, it was not going bad. It was not going badly by any means, but this just, this just elevated it, man. Oh, dude. <laughs> the explosion was so violent it threw his car over a block and made it land on its balcony. You know, you know what I wonder? How the heck were people ready with cameras to catch the moment? In 1973! Like... <laughs> oh man... Go on Discord, I said YouTube, please, okay. <laughs> oh man! Oh, this is, this is great. This is, this is amazing. Oh, I will, okay, guys, I, I'm gonna carry, I'm gonna carry this in my heart f as long as I live. <laughs> This is this is gold. This is certified gold. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh man, I can't. I can't wait to I can't wait for I can't wait to show this to my mom. I'll, I'll show I'll show her right after street. <laughs> it's it's Ita, those Vosks don't don't mess around. E yeah, no, I've heard. I I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine the cameraman was just trying to take pics of the building. <laughs> just surprise! Hi! <laughs> surprise! Flying car! Woo! <laughs> the bike. It's the journey of a lifetime! That was terrible. <laughs> oh man. So, yeah, uh, while well, that was happening in, in Spain, l actually, let me... <laughs> actually, let me... Let me just... Yeah, okay, so it was... The <laughs> it was in 19... It was in 1973. December 1973. So, while uh, Mr... While Mr. Blanco... While Mr. Blanco was uh, busy um, becoming the first Spanish astronaut. <laughs> nice hang time. Hello, Ventus. Welcome. I'm sorry. You just uh, you just caught me. You just caught me in a laughing fit. <laughs> Just seen you in my recommended view view videos for sign viewer here. You're very you're very welcome to hang out. You're very welcome to or even just lurk if you want. <laughs> okay, like again, I I kind of well on one hand I apologize on the other like not so much because okay so uh, chat told me to Google first Spanish astronaut and it's uh, it's something. I feel like they should have been able to put a Spanish flag up there on the balcony. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ducktails Munti. Oh, dude! If someone, <laughs> like, if someone, what if someone just, what if someone just took the, just took the picture, just took the picture and like made a video 
I made a video of it. I, I better not. I better not knock my my water glass uh, over. <laughs> uh, made a video like of the of the car just like rolling as the Ducktales theme plays. Well, not the Ducktales theme, the Moon theme, which I would reproduce, but the but the <laughs> but the notes are a little too high. <laughs> oh man, so so yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this moment, guys. I mean, seriously, one giant step for mankind. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So, uh, while Mr. Blanco was uh, busy becoming uh, the, the predecessor of Spain's uh, space program, kind of late, kind of late to the race, I would say, 1973. You're, you're a little late, man. You're a little late. We already got we already got a man on the moon, or or did you jump or did you jump in just because you thought it was trendy? Hmm. <laughs> okay. So while this was happening, people in Portugal were not were not very happy, especially not the military. Why? Because they kept being sent to the colonies to die. He was busy up in orbit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> it's it's going to take me a while to recover from that. Space programs were there to boost moral mostly. Well, um uh, this one this one definitely this one definitely gave me a boost. <laughs> a morale boost. Moral, but yeah. Um, so yeah, getting to so we're get we're getting to the main event. We're getting to the main event. So yeah, while while Mr. Blanco blew up, <laughs> you had you had the you had the military in Portugal planning a few things, mostly. Oh, right, right. Something... This one brought, brought democracy to Spain. Yep. Yep, that's... And that's more than a lot of... Uh, that's more than a lot of space programs can say. <laughs> hey, Zark! Welcome! Tragic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right, right, right. No, I'm, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. <clears throat> I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself because... Because of Mr. Blanco and his amazing flying car. Um... Uh, How are you, Zark? I am. I am telling a very long-winded version of uh, the holiday history. <laughs> you know, the holiday that we're currently having, Vin Sink the Real Simp. So yeah. Um, so a few years, like I think it was like in around 1968, if I'm not wrong, uh, Salazar had an accident. Uh, the the story goes the story the story that is mostly well known is that he fell off from his chair. Are you talking about the twenty fifth day? Yes, yes, I am. <laughs> um, so the so yeah, the story goes that Salazar fell from his chair, but it's most likely apocryphal. What most likely happened. Is that he had an accident while taking a bath? At least that's what I. At least that's what I've heard. And they made up the chair story that it wouldn't be, you know, as embarrassing because who wants the dictator of a far right regime to have uh, to uh, be incapac uh, incapacitated while he's butt naked? Am I right? <laughs> so <sorry>, sorry, <laughs> Yeah. Franco Franco must must have been terrified to sit in chairs for years after that. <laughs> Salazar versus Kaida. Exactly. <laughs> Salazar versus chair. <laughs> so yeah. Um so yeah, he had so yeah, he had that uh, he had that accident and uh, he was uh, incapacitated for the rest of his life. Uh, there was a new prime minister installed. 
uh, his name was Marcel Caetano, uh, and he he actually tried, he actually actively tried to make things a little bit better for the populace, just a little, because again, it was still the same regime, like he couldn't stray too far from what was already established. Uh, besides, he he had been he had been a confidant of uh, of Salazar, so 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 yeah, like his political leanings were not too different. He was more moderate, yes, but he was still in the far right. He was still in the Salazaristic far right. Uh, so yeah, and this tiny period between between uh, Salazar's accident and the revolution is usually called the Mar Primavera Marcelista, the Marcellist Spring, um, because of some of the reforms that he tried to, to enact. But, um, but it was too late, like the, like the military machine was already, it was already in motion to uh, dethrone him, so to speak. And on the eve of the day, 25 of the month of April of the year 1974 there were two signals broadcasted in the radio one was the Portuguese entry for the 1974 Eurovision Song Contest uh, which was a song of what was the what was his name Paul Carvalho it was a song by Paulo Carvalho uh, named uh, E Depois do Adeus, After the Goodbye. Uh, which I am not, like, I have never heard it in full, but it goes, but the beginning goes something like Quis saber quem sou, o que faço aqui Quem me abandonou de quem me esqueci, etc, etc. If you search like E depois do adeus <laughs> on uh, on YouTube, you'll find it. You'll probably even find a, an actual performance um, of his, of his uh, on the Eurovision Song Contest. The Eurovision Song Contest was always like a big deal, a big deal in Portugal. Like there's there's still there is there's still a uh, a lot of the songs, a lot of the songs that uh, that we that we brought there, were still um, uh, they they got a lot of airplay on the radio, like and for years, for years that was that was the that was the case. Eurovision is going to be hosted very near to me. This oh, that's cool. I can't imagine like how how much how much do Eurovision. In Eurovision tickets cost must be really expensive, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Yeah, no, I I believe you. Must be pretty must be pretty good for tourism as well. <laughs> but that's one of the things that I think is interesting about Eurovision is the fact that um, is the fact that since I mean countries countries with strong. Countries with strong dias diasporas have a little bit of a leg up on others uh, because you know people are people can't vote on the country that they live in, but they can vote on their country of origin. So yeah, sometimes sometimes you can tell sometimes you can tell that the voting is a little bit rigged because of that. It's not you know no, no they didn't vote for this song because it's good. They voted for this song because because national pride or whatever okay so yeah that was that was the first that was the first signal uh, and then the second one was a song that became basically synonymous with uh, with the date Eurovision Eurovision tickets range from 30 pounds to 380 <gasps> oh man but 30 pounds that is Hmm, that's probably like between 40 between 40 to 50 euros, right? I'm guessing the nosebleed seats are cheap. 
<laughs> the nose, the nosebleed seats. W what do you mean? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not too familiar with like concert lingo. I, I apologize. <laughs> but yeah, uh, but yeah, this, the, the second. The far away sl oh okay the far away seat okay okay why do they call them that why do they call them that do do, do the seats do the seats ca cause nosebleeds that's terrible <laughs> um but uh but yeah so uh as I was they are so far so far up and far away okay so basically you have to you have to prop your head up like the entire time is that is that why because that that that's that does seem likely <laughs> that does seem likely okay but as i was saying okay so the second song the second signal was a song that is Pretty much synonymous with the holiday in general, which was a song named The Grand La Vila Morena by this guy named Zeca Afonso. He was kind of like a folk singer. Uh, and a lot of and a lot of his a lot of his work has like coded anti-regime messages. And this song is no this song is is no different. It basically talks about it basically talks about uh this uh, town, town village. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Grandula is uh, is a town or village, but uh, yeah, it's a. It, but yeah, it's a settlement, uh, and uh, it's basically talking about how it's a land of liberty and uh, freedom, where everyone is treated equal, etc., etc. Ladies and gentlemen, Garfield and friends. No. <laughs> Sorry, that's the fir that's the first thing that comes into my mind. <laughs> that's the first thing that comes into my mind whenever I see ladies and gentlemen, Garfield and friends. <laughs> Welcome to the fight of the century. In the right corner of in green and red, we have the Portuguese leader, the one and only Salazar. And on the left corner in brown, we have the solid and still the chair. Let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> I mean, I definitely, <laughs> I definitely, I definitely laughed. <laughs> Friends are there to get you to help you get started, to give you a push on your way. When you've got the world on your shoulders. <laughs> Friends are there to give you a lift, the tip. Oh damn it! I I don't remember. I don't remember the the whole lyrics. Wrestling match, grab a ladder and chair. <laughs> All right, guys. I want to I want a clear fight and I want to I want a fair fight, a clean fight. I don't remember the rest of the spiel, so let's just go. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't I love I love do I love doing the announcer voice. I love doing the announcer voice. It's just, you know, just going all out. Like <laughs> Actually, that actually that that could also work. That that could also work for, you know, the actual happenings of uh, of the revolution. In this quarter, you have the remnants of the far right regime, also known as the Rheumatic Brigade. The Marcellists, and on the side you have the ones, the onlys, the people who are more than fed up with uh, with being conscripted all the time to go die in some ditch in the jungle. The MFA. <laughs> Oh man. Now you have an excuse to play the Chow Garden in SA2. All right, yeah, they have the Chow races, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, the Chow Karate, yeah. Right, 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 right. 
<laughs> oh man. I remember really wanted to beat the, the Chow Karate and I just couldn't get my Chow to be good enough. <laughs> Alright, I still remember my first Chow. Uh, her name was Trixie. And she was a flying angel Chow. Well, she turned into one. <laughs> she wasn't one originally. But, uh, yeah. Perfection all the way. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna finish the story. So, the military gang went like, Okay, guys, we're gonna take over a bunch of radio stations and then we're gonna make... We're gonna make the governing body an offer they can't refuse. <laughs> I wanted this on my history books. <laughs> See, like, if history was taught like that, people would pay a lot more attention. <laughs> oh, man. I really, I really think that people should rethink how to teach history. Because history is so interesting! It's like, ah, Why do people keep saying that history is boring? History is not boring! It has everything that you want in a good piece of fiction! Except it was all real! <laughs> Weren't the Putsis mostly communists? Uh, there were a lot of communist leanings, yes. 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 What the heck? Uh, but they were mostly socialists. They were mostly socialists. So, yeah. Left, but not hard left. Well, not far left, at least. Like, uh, they, they were. They, they were. They were most. They were mostly left. Um, but yeah, and, uh, well, I would be, uh, I, I don't, I would be remiss if I didn't say, okay, so the reason why people have such fond memories of, uh, the, the revolution as well is, you know, the imagery that you usually see, which is when dawn broke, when dawn broke and, uh, people were you know, going about their lives, going to their jobs and stuff, and uh, they hadn't, like, turned on the radio or the TV. Um, people in Lisbon just, you know, woke up to the sight of uh, military equipment on the streets. And, uh, and at first, you can imagine that, like, th that's not a... That's not a pleasing image to wake up to. Um, and then, as people turn, uh, turned on the radio, they started realizing, oh, wait, something's going on. Oh, crap. Uh, also, uh, kayfabe off. Uh, my, uh, my mom actually told me uh, what it was like uh, at her house when, uh, when on, on the dawn. <laughs> well, not on the dawn, but like on the morning of the day. That, that it happened. Uh, basically, she was getting up, getting ready for school. Uh, her and her sister, because they um, because uh, they slept in the same room. And out of nowhere, my grandma just barges into the room. No one's going to school today. There's there's been a coup. There's been a coup. There's been a coup. No one goes to school today. Bye. I don't know, I imagine many boys were really excited. Well, yeah, especially if they were like my mom, who after this, they went like... Yay, no school! Hooray! <laughs> Whoa, cool, real tank! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> From what I was told, when my mom heard the news about the revolution, she panicked and went to get her eldest daughters, my mom and aunt. Well, when your grandma met at school, Stadenlo started playing Swan Lake on TV to signal that everything is okay. I did not I did not know that. I did not know that new around. I mean, admittedly, like next year I'll probably next year I'll probably do a little bit more coverage of uh, of the event. Mostly because I think that it's like it's a cool story. <laughs> it's an it's an inter it's an it's an interesting story. 
it's it's an interesting story like and uh, i mean they they made like whole movies about it like multiple like there's this one that i that i want to watch uh that it, it's a swedish movie actually and it's about uh, a group of uh, swedish like young documentary film film Nah, it's a Soviet meme. Oh, okay. But, you know, I I wouldn't put it past them. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past them. Like, the, the regime was so paranoid, was so paranoid that I wouldn't, that I wouldn't put it past them. Like, and, uh, and I mean, I guess, like, at the time, there was only, like, one TV channel, and it was owned by the state, so it wouldn't be too weird. Well, my mom, aka Mom HD, was one day old when when the twenty fifth day started. Yeah, that that that's. Oh, so she's oh, so she's literally like a revolution baby. <laughs> the Soviets always played Swan Lake on TV when something went horribly wrong. Oh, oh, oh dear. <laughs> Okay, like, uh, pff, I just started thinking, like, a, a bunch of events that could have triggered that. Okay, one of them, one of them was actually, uh, earlier than the inception of TV, uh, which was, uh, what happened to the Romanovs, but that is not... <laughs> that is not... That is not... That has nothing to do... <laughs> except for the whole thing being, uh, being orchestrated by a communist... Uh, communist leaning people well the bolsheviks were actual communists anyway <laughs> anyway <laughs> stalin died swan lake brezhnev <laughs> andropov charneko all dead all swan lake <laughs> yeah revolution of all hd i should start i should actually i should actually start giving my giving my family names like you know, Atlantean names, so you guys know like what what uh, well uh, well not a, well not exactly Atlantean names, but you know uh, stream friendly names. <laughs> um, so uh, so yeah. After all of that, people started settling down, seeing that the military wasn't going to do anything to them, and uh, they started realizing what was actually going on. And uh, I think that like one of the one of the things that most people that most people know about the revolution was that at some point uh, there was this florist. I don't remember how I don't remember how it happened. Maybe someone maybe someone in chat maybe someone in chat will uh, will remember it uh, better than I do right now. But, uh, okay, so there was this florist who was selling red carnations, which are in season at this time of year. And, uh, I don't know why, but they started putting the carnations in the barrels of the guns. And th that became, um, I'm saying real names. Ah, ah, yeah, I get ya, I get ya. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that that's that's what became the that's what became the image of the revolution, like the guns with the carnations on the on the barrel. You know, kind of a kind of poetic, kind of a beautiful. <laughs> The Americans did a similar things in, in protests to the Vietnam War, putting flowers and guns via the 60s. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, that, that does sound like something that, uh, that would happen. But I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure that the people involved in this would not be familiar with that because we're talking about, we're talking about Portugal in the, early, uh, in the early 70s. A lot of Portuguese media was filtered a lot of Portuguese media was filtered, it was censored. Censored in the actual, like, sense of the word. Ah, very convenient. I was looking for a vase. <laughs> vase, vase. <laughs> vase. 
Yeah. But yeah, I'm... I mean, maybe some, maybe some, maybe some people were familiar with the imagery, but uh, judging how, that, judging, judging the kind of people that usually protested the Vietnam War and the kind of people that were in power and controlling the media in Portugal at the same time, I would not be surprised if they did not let that kind of imagery pass. Maybe it's just a, a human idea around the world to symbolize peace. Yeah, no, it, it is. It is. And I'm pretty sure that there's like other countries in the world that also did the whole thing with uh, red carnations. It's just that, you know, Por Portugal is really... This is our thing! Don't steal our thing! That That's something that didn't change. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's that's the story, the very long winded story <laughs> of the 25th of April, the Carnation Revolution. Has a lot more detail to it. Oh, dude, uh, there were these. There, there was, there was this, uh, there was a special that they that they made in like the late 90s uh, that documents the, that documents the happenings pretty well. I think I think that I think that it might be that it might be available to watch on uh, on uh, the on the archives of uh, this of uh, state television uh, RTP or RTP basically I they they have they have like a whole they have a whole um, a whole plethora of stuff that uh, was uh, that that they've saved from from the years and since you know they've been the state television and they started like in the 50s um they have a lot of stuff oh one thing that i found there once like there was this children pro children's programming block that included pinky and the brain and they uploaded that in the archives in the archives of the of, of the tv channel in rtp ar archives what the heck like uh, pff, I don't remember. Like uh, I don't remember if I watched if I watched uh, anything other. But I do remember that that was there. That was there. And then I'm like, are you allowed to do this? And I'm like, I don't care, dude. Just woof. <laughs> and then the colonies collapsed into decades-long bloody civil war, and Portugal experienced a dog epidemic. Happy end. How nice. Thanks. Yeah. Wow, nice. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. No, oh, no. The whole the whole thing, the whole thing with Timor. The whole thing with uh, with Timor, Tim Timor, Tim Timor Leste, East Timor. Oh, oh, that was Yeah, no, because in in absolutely lovely, like in in the in the most Portuguese fashion imaginable, we left things half-assed. So we were like, oh yeah, uh, we're not the leaders anymore, good luck, bye! And then uh, left the colonies to fend for themselves. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you noticed, guys, but the people who were on the... on the bureaucratic... on the bureaucratic uh, levels... Like, uh, you know, the people who actually knew how to run things, you know, the managers... And, and all the people like that? Yeah, you... You deported them. You deported them back to Portugal, where they went on to have terrible, terrible lives because there was no room for them there. And uh, they had to... Uh, oh my goodness, that, that's, that's... That's the whole can of beans. <laughs> that's the whole can of beans. <laughs> Portuguese history, man. <laughs> oh man, I actually know. I actually know a shop. I actually know a shopkeeper who lived there, who who lived in Angola and had and had to come back when the revolution happened. And he described to me what it was like, what it was like to be there, like at the airport, waiting for your flight, and you know, not being sure if you were going to survive long enough for your flight to come. Basically. <laughs> okay, Stray Cat, thank you so much for coming. <laughs> 
You're welcome. I'm not. I'm probably not gonna be. I'm probably not gonna be too long. <laughs> I'm probably not gonna be not gonna be too long anymore. Uh, we're almost at two hours. <laughs> so yeah, and you're welcome. Uh, well, I'm off to make dinner. Bye, everyone. Bye, Kyrie. Have a nice rest. Of, have a nice rest of the uh, nice, rest. A rest of a nice stream. Happy Liberty Day. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Alexa. Have a have a great dinner. Uh, Cape Verde, huh? Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> oh, so there's new people in charge, huh? Okay, okay. I, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bad. Interesting, interesting things. Recent history. It's so weird to it's so weird to think that some of the stuff some of the stuff that I've all, that I've actually been able to see and experience is already part of history. Like it's already taught in history books. It's uh, like for example the like for example just staying on the topic of Portuguese history the whole thing with Macau. Uh, uh, I was I was here I was here when that happened I remember that happening I saw it on TV <laughs> Amazing how the Cape Verde <laughs> the Cape Verdes are eligible for U EU membership then again so is Canada Yeah That just blows my mind Can Canada is eligible for the EU what a tangled web we weave. <laughs> that is that is amazing. Why isn't Canada in Eurovision? Why isn't Canada and Cape Verde in Eurovision? Why is Turkey in Eurovision? And Canada and Cape Verde aren't. That's what I want to know. Why is Australia a guest in Eurovision? For at least two years that I remember and I'm... And I'm sure that they've been in on more. It's just that I don't know. <laughs> this Pia Noir thing sounds cool. We should get in on that. Uh... Oh, right now I can't. Uh, I, 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 I can't. I'm not. I'm not seeing what it is. <laughs> I'm not seeing what it is. I'm sorry. But Australia is in Eurovision. Yes. Yes. That that's that's what I said. <laughs> I still don't get it. Like just, just the expenses. Like because a trip from Europe to Australia is super expensive. Like, I think that it's close. I think that it's I think that it's close to like uh, uh two thousand euros. It takes like 2,000 euros from, from, uh, at least, at least from Portugal. At least from Portugal, it, it's like 2,000 euros. Or maybe that's just the price that you get if, if you want to book a trip now for tomorrow or something. No, probably that's even more expensive. I know that, like, I know that I've tried, you know, simulating that once. And why the translation of Cabo Verde is Cape Verde and not Green Cable or Cable Verde? <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure that it's because it refers to an actual cape, not not a cable like uh, <laughs> like an like uh, like an electricity cable. Someone mixed up Austria and Australia during the, the admissions, and everyone is too embarrassed to invite. What? Oh my god. <laughs> that is uh that is something and here i thought that confusing austria with with australia was just a thing that they did in uh in uh Hol in the hollow live vn's early early days yep nope <laughs> there's people in higher echelons of society who confuse Austria and Australia? Imagine, imagine thinking, imagine thinking that his that Hitler was born in Australia. 
I mean, jeez. Not actually what happened. Probably. I just wanted to say that because of you. I just made it up. Oh no! Don't guess like me! I am inclined to believe the things! <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, man. Uh, Dorothy McCarter, welcome! Better call and better call Saul. Mm, I don't know if he would help us. I don't I don't know. I don't know if he would help us in this situation. Honestly. His 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 field of expertise is uh something else. I don't know, like a Does confusing a whole country's name count as like anything that would be punishable in court? I don't, because I don't think so. <laughs> Australian Hitler holding impassionate speeches about the e movement. <laughs> was that was that actually was that actually during during Hitler's time? Let me check. I shouldn't be I shouldn't be so casual mentioning the guy because you know this is the internet. Let me, let me see. Great. Emu. The Emu War. Oh, ho, 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 Better yet. Better yet. It was, it was during, I think that it was during his rise to power. That is awesome! <laughs> that is so... That is so cool! <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> like I said, history, man. That's actually something that I love seeing. Like, okay, so... Who are the people who were alive at the same time? Like... Uh, who was a kid while this other historical figure was uh, was an adult and doing their thing? Like, what happenings were going on at the same time? Because a lot of time, because a lot of times, uh, do a voiceover the commercial. I don't. I have never seen the commercial. I can't. Sorry. <laughs> also, uh, I apologize, but I don't. I don't do requests. Unless it's unless it's the actual stream idea, unless unless it's the actual stream idea, I've actually I've actually thought of it once, but I never went through with it. Um, but um, uh, <laughs> there are only two countries that ever lost to birds. Australia is one of them. <laughs> what is what is the other one? What is the other one? New around? Now no, I'm curious. I'm super curious. Anticipation. <laughs> oh man, uh, I forgot. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, about uh, history and uh, about history and uh, the whole thing of uh, being. Uh, well, not not Ch China. China lost to birds. What Sp was it? Was it actually sparrows? <laughs> okay. Um. At least Australia lost to freaking big birds. Uh, China. I mean, okay. Yeah, they're smaller, but in larger numbers, they're they're. They could be more of a menace. I am making a murder drones movie. Oh, that's... That's cool. <laughs> I 
I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to imagine. Okay, so how the heck does an entire country lose a war? Well, first, how does a whole country go to war against sparrows? And the, uh, oh, I, I think I'm starting to see where it's going. Yeah, okay. Now let's keep making fun of the of the emo war. That's funnier. <laughs> the four pests campaign, the CCP decided that sparrows are an enemy of the people for picking seed for picking seeds and grains. So they went around killing it. Oh no, was that Was that a part was that a part of the Great Leap Forward? I mean, you said CCP, so, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to, uh, starting to think that it, it probably was. Do you know murder drones? No, 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 I don't. <laughs> Just fuzz a little bit outside of my interests. The problem is, sparrows also eat locusts. Oh, oh, that does sound like it. That does sound like the, the great leap forward. Oh no. Why? <laughs> that reminds me of how they thought that uh, oh yeah, we're going to plant all these plants. We're going to we're going to put all these plants very close together because obviously they're going to work together because that's what plants do. Uh no, plants are freaking vicious. They will eat each other up if they have to. <laughs> Uh, do your anime character voice? Uh, there's a lot of anime character voices. I usually use my, I usually use my, uh, my natural voice. Maybe, I don't know, like, I don't, leaps and bounds. <laughs> leaps and bounds forward, yeah. <laughs> Oh man! Oh no! Like uh, I'm seriously, the Great Leap Forward is just one of those. It's one of those stories that it's like, it could only get worse. Watch it do just that. <laughs> Say it's the real Dracula. Uh. Okay, I have to confess, I have never, I have never actually watched uh, Dracula, so I'm not too familiar with how Bella Lugosi played him. I know that he was freaking iconic. That's what I know. But I don't remember like the accent. I remember, I remember that, I remember that the reason why it is the way it is, is because he learned his lines phonetically. Uh, but I am not, I am not familiar with like any. Lines. I am only familiar with like the 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 stereotype, the stereotype of the of the Dracula, like uh, the I'm Dracula, bleh, <laughs> which is probably a very offensive, uh, a, a very offensive uh, accent to uh, to some people. <laughs> Actually, I should actually ask. I should ask my brother. My brother is a huge fan of like the Universal monster movies of the '30s. Do you know Ben Schwartz? Yes, yes, I know Ben Schwartz. I know. I know Ben. I know Ben Schwartz. He is awesome. <laughs> Count Duckula would be more on brand. Hmm. Right. I just don't know. I just don't know what he sounds like because. Okay, it's like this. One of the weird things, one of the weird things that that uh, growing up, that growing up or at least visiting Portugal from you know as long as I have, is that a lot, a lot of knowledge that I have of like shows and stuff, I gained from very very limited sources. Count Ducula is one of those things that I've been aware of for a very very long time 
but I've never actually watched it. I've never, I've never actually sat down and watched a bunch of episodes of Count Dracula. I know that there were VHS tapes uh, of it available, uh, probably like in rental places or something. Um, also because I see, uh, be also because I saw like ads for them on. Uh, Uh, you know, on other on other VHS tapes, uh, and I know I know for example the name of the actor that did the narration for the for the opening, but I don't know like for example who voiced Count Dracula himself, uh, and who voiced you know any of the staff. I know that there's a staff, <laughs> of, a staff of like the castle where he lives in. Um, I know that it's like, I know that a lot of people have very fond memories of it. It's too bad that Stray isn't here because uh, I think that she's familiar with, uh, with stuff that aired in the UK and the Count Dracula counts. Um, it's, it's a UK product. So yeah, uh, I've actually never seen like an actual episode. I, I should probably get on that. There's so much stuff I want to watch. So much stuff that I want to watch, but it's like... Oh man, am I actually going to enjoy this? Like, should I be using my time for something else? <laughs> because the pacing in 80s shows is very different. 80s, 80s shows, early 90s shows is very different from what we're used to nowadays. Sometimes it's a little hard to, st to stand back and uh, appreciate it for what it is. Uh, should Ben Schwartz be fitting as Sonic? I mean, he already is. I mean, he already is Sonic, so uh, it's not it's not it's not a question of should, mostly of is he, and I'll when Ben Schwartz was announced as Sonic, I was more surprised by the fact that it was Ben Schwartz, as in it was someone that I actually knew, that wasn't you know a big Hollywood. That wasn't a big Hollywood. Uh, that wasn't a big Hollywood star. Um, then the fact that it was Ben Schwartz, basically, because I already knew Ben Schwartz from. At that point, at that point, I already knew Ben Schwartz from three different properties, and he was great in all of them. So I went like, Nah, you know, he's gonna nail this. He's gonna nail this. Like he has. I mean, of course I was a little bit weirded out. I was a little bit weirded out because the version of Sonic that they went with in the in the movies uh, is kind of different from the one that you see in the games. He he's, he has a younger... He has... He's younger, period. He's just younger. Uh, he's more naive. He's more... Uh, he's more of a kid. He's more of a kid. He even says so, like, in, in the second movie. Um, and that was... That, that, that was interesting. It was interesting to see that the movie was allowed to do that, especially since Sega had been very weird. Like, I'm sorry, I'm kind of I'm kind of rambling, but you guys know that this is that this is a topic that I... <laughs> that I actually that I actually don't don't mind. That, that I don't mind. Yeah, no, like I was about to say, like uh, I, I was about I was about to say that uh, yeah, like I, I entertain, I I, enter I entertain the, these uh, uh, these talks because they're because they're stuff that I'm actually that I'm actually interested in. And I don't mind talking about them. But again, like New Around said, and I had already seen and I already said before, uh, this is not a request stream. This is a chat stream. So things are just allowed to flow and uh, I am not going to say things just because people ask me to say them <laughs> that's actually something that's actually something that was super weird okay a little bit of backstory okay so you guys know that I started streaming on reality uh, and one thing that was very strange to me was that there were a lot of people on that app that went like Oh, um, you come in, you come into the stream, and and I say this, 
Usually was like an ara ara or something like that, which I never really, I never really got. I really never, I never really understood, you know, the point of it. It's like, a, a, yeah, I can, I can do, I, I can do that, but why would I, why would I go like, eh, every time that someone comes in on the stream, I'll say this. I'm like, what? Don't be weird, man. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, what was I, uh, what was I thinking about? Kind of get, I, uh, I kind of got the, yeah, no, I got, I got derailed. First, f first with, uh, first with Count Duckula and then, uh, and then with Ben, and then with Ben Schwartz. But I like, I like Ben Schwartz a lot. I like, I like him a lot. Like, ever since I first laid ears on his voice, I mentioned before it was with uh, Rennie Cunningham, Ninth Grade Ninja, which is still a show that I recommend to people, at least the first season. The second one is also very good, but you can tell that it was cancelled before it had time to really gear up and do what it actually wanted to do. Which is sad. Oh, and Gilbert Gottfried go voices a character, just randomly. Uh, where did we leave off? Uh, I mean, we were talking about we were talking about the Great Leap Forward. We were talking about the Great Leap Forward, and, and then uh, and then the whole Dracula thing came up. Um, though, though to be to be complete. Oh, I forgot one thing that I one thing that I wanted one thing that I wanted to. Do, but um, maybe, maybe I'm gonna, maybe I'm gonna leave, maybe I'm gonna leave that for like a community post. Uh, like, oh yeah, Bird Wars, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, <laughs> that's that's what that's what we were that's what we were talking about. I think I was saying something about like uh, about uh, leaving the leaving most of the jokes for the for the emu. For the emu wars. Last time on Portugal, can our heroes convince China to take back Macau 20 years early? <laughs> yeah, I I think they I think they did. <laughs> I'm not like I don't I don't remember what was the original what was the original plan, but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Wait, 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 so... If the plan was to only return it... Uh, only return it... F 20 years later? That means that it would have been returned in 2019? Huh. That's a long time of Portuguese Macau. Which, by the way, was uh, featured in an episode of uh, DuckTales 2017, which, in which Ben Schwartz voices uh, Dewey Duck. See, it all comes back together! It all ties together! <laughs> and we're back to Disney! Disney Ep Epcot! Everything's connected! Wake up, sheeple! <laughs> Oh man! Right, I was I was saying that I was saying that I was thinking maybe. Um, what do you guys think? What do you guys think of? Uh, man, 1999. Okay, so. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So they thought about returning it 20 years later, no, 20 years earlier, but they ended up not doing that. Close to Hong Kong, Hong Kong's lease expiring. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh. Yeah, I was saying. Okay, so you guys probably, you guys probably saw it on on Twitter. So I, I finally finished that uh, that project that I was. Well, I call it a project, but it's not. It, it, is that exactly it's that exactly a project basically the thing 
okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start calling it the thing where the thing where Kyrie draws a bunch of uh, Hollow Tempest members meditating. <laughs> because why not? Uh, so yeah, you saw it on Twitter. Uh, um, I mean, I posted it on Twitter. Uh, and I was thinking if I should post like the final results here on YouTube, on the community tab. Uh, just because... First, I've been thinking, I've been thinking of posting some art stuff in the community tab, you know, to keep it, to keep it active. And second, because I, all, I actually worked on some parts of it uh, on the actual stream, so... On, on actual streams. Streams? Stream? One stream? Two stream? Five stream? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I was thinking, I was thinking of doing that. Probably gonna, probably gonna do it after, after the stream. I mean, I don't know, like, what do you guys think? Do you think it's appropriate? Or do you think that I should save the community tab for, like, other stuff, like announcements and stuff? I love this song. <laughs> I really want my uh, I really want my life to settle I really want my life to settle down a little bit because I want to play Star Fox Adventures but I want to start at a point oh by the way are you <laughs> seems fine to me oh by the way are you still melting melting I, I wasn't I, I wasn't I wasn't aware that I... I wasn't aware that I was melting. Oh, wait. Hold on. I went to check. I, I don't feel like I'm melting. What, what do you mean? <laughs> and Macau's emblem is an hour is a lotus. Perfect seat to the, me to the meditation artwork. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought of uh, the weather seems kind of spicy over there. Um, spicy? No, actually, it's uh, actually it's not been too hot. Actually, it's not been too hot. Like, uh, I have I have the heater on. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but but yeah. I have the I have the heater on. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I I mean I'm not exactly dressed for I'm not exactly dressed for the for the cold weather for the cold weather. Well, I'm not dressed for a cold house. Cause that's that's another thing. That's another thing. That's another thing about Portugal. Everyone that comes to live here for an extended period of time complains about how cold the houses are in winter so only spain is frying probably good <laughs> it's rather chilly here too yeah no like in like uh these last these last few days it's actually been a little bit annoying because i want to i want to be able to wear what i want if I want to go outside, and I can't? I suppose chili is also spicy, but... <laughs> I get it. I get it! <laughs> oh, man. Hmm. Now I was, uh, this is a little, this is a little bit, uh, 
this is a little bit impromptu and I was uh, and I was wondering I, I was wondering if it was if it would be a good a, an, a good idea uh, why do I stutter so much I need to stop stuttering how, how can you how can you do public speaking if you stutter you can't you, you can't streamers don't stutter well they they kind of do sometimes but <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't, uh, I don't have time for that. I was thinking, I was thinking maybe, like, going over, going over all the, um, all the drawings. Going over, like, all the drawings and, uh, explain some of my choices and stuff. But I think that I'm gonna save that for text, like, on, uh, when I, when I post them on the community tab. I'm just gonna... Uh, like I didn't do it. I didn't do it when I posted them on Twitter because you know character limit and all that. But uh, but it, now that I think about it, I can actually do that without any trouble in uh, uh, on YouTube because there's like if there's a character limit, it's <laughs> much longer. <laughs> it's much longer than Twitter. So yeah, that's that's probably that's probably what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that probably after dinner. Which, speaking of, um, I, uh, unfortunately, I think I have to go. <laughs> I think that, I think that things, I think that things are already, already ready. Already ready. Already ready. Yes, things are already ready. Na 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 na. Oh man, like that one, that one Tom and Jerry short where they just, Launch into a musical number of Mama Yo Mama Yo Quero, <laughs> and uh, completely butcher the Portuguese language. It's uh, it, it's amazing. It's like, ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, guys. I think speaking of spices, time for dinner. Yes. <laughs> Yes, indeed. <laughs> okay, guys. Um, yeah, I guess. Uh, don't forget the astronaut thing. No, I. I'm not gonna forget. I'm not gonna forget the astronaut thing. I have. I have. I absolutely sh have to show it to my mom. <laughs> I absolutely have to show it to my mom. I would show. I would show it to my dad, but I don't think that it's a kind of humor that he'll find all that funny. He thinks I'm he thinks I'm kind of weird for doing research on like uh, disasters and uh, dark things in history. So he's probably gonna look at that and not think that it's funny. <laughs> okay, uh, bye everyone. Thank you so much for coming. And as always, ekaze and have a nice rest of uh, Liberty Day. Yay! Bye.